Okay, now let's look at some of the upper portions of the external structure of the heart. This is the oracle, then again here is the right atrium. And then this structure right here is the superior vena cava. And it collects all the venous blood from the upper portion of the body and then delivers it to the right atrium. Now, you have two big vessels that come off, right? This vessel is called the right brachiocephalic. This guy right here is the left brachiocephalic vein. And the name kind of tells you what they drain. Brachy, arm, cephalic, head. So it drains the left brachiocephalic vein, drains the left arm, and the left portion of the upper portion of the body, the brain back to the right side of the heart, and the right does the same thing. Um, you can see a little better here the right coronary artery, and then you can see here the pulmonary trunk, and then the ascending aorta, and then the beginning of those three vessels that come off the uh, arch of the aorta. Okay, now let's look at the inner portions of the right ventricle. So, you have this portion right here, which represents the right ventricular myocardium, the heart muscle. And again, that's the contractile portion of the heart. That's what pushes that venous blood to the right, uh, in the right side of the heart to the lungs. Then you have this valve right here, and this valve is the tricuspid valve. And the tricuspid valve separates the right atrium from the right ventricle. Now, hanging off of the valve, anchoring the tricuspid valve are these little tiny threads called chordae tendini. And then attached to the chordae are these little muscles. <coughs> and these little muscles are called papillary muscles. So when the right ventricle contracts, you don't want the blood that was in the right ventricle going back up into the right atrium, right? That's called regurgitation. You don't want that. So to keep that valve tight from blood backing up, the papillary muscles contract with the right ventricle and then the valve stays shut. And when the valve is shut, blood cannot back up into the right atrium. Instead, when the right ventricle contracts, it's gonna send that deoxygenated blood through a valve that separates the right atria and the pulmonary trunk. And that valve is called the pulmonic valve or pulmonary valve. So the pulmonic valve separates the right, atri uh, right ventricle from the pulmonary trunk. And again, this gives you a nice picture of the intraventricular septum. That intraventricular septum separates the right and over here, you don't see it that well, the left ventricle. You don't want the mixing of blood between the right side and the left side. Makes sense, right? You better hope it does. Okay, now what we're looking at is the left side of the heart. The left side of the heart, you have the left atrium, and then separating the left atrium from the left ventricle is the mitral valve or bicuspid valve. Now, the same thing applies 
that it did with the tricuspid valve. As you can see there's chordae, and then the chordae are attached to these papillary muscles because when the left ventricle contracts, it's going to send blood, oxygenated blood to the cells of the body through the aorta. So you don't want that blood backing up. The mitral valve, when it closes, prevents that blood from going back up into the left atrium. Yabba. Now, hanging off the left atrium, you have these vessels from the lungs. These vessels from the lungs are the pulmonary veins. The pulmonary veins, in this case, they are taking the blood that has been newly oxygenated by the lungs and bringing that newly oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left atria. So remember, veins take blood to the heart, arteries take blood away from the heart. So in the pulmonary circulation, a vein carries oxygenated blood and an artery carries deoxygenated blood. And there are actually two sets of pulmonary veins. So if you look here, you can actually see these are the left pulmonary veins and then inside here, whoops, inside here, these are the right pulmonary veins because you got two lungs. And they bring that oxygenated blood back to the left atrium. Now, if you look here, you can see you have this thick wall. This is the left ventricular myocardium. So left ventricular myocardium or heart muscle. And the left ventricular myocardium is much thicker. Even though the right and left side of the heart pump the same amount of blood, the left side has to generate more pressure because it has to deliver it to the entire body. And then this little white area here, this has to deal with the electrical conduction system of the heart. So this is um, the left bundle branch. And then the left bundle branch then splits off into those Purkinje fibers. So the Purkinje fibers are what stimulate the right and left ventricle to contract. Okay, so we talked about the mitral valve, which my hand is pushing out of the way right now. And finally, I want to show you the aortic valve, the aortic semilunar valve. So the aortic valve, when the left ventricle contracts, it's going to force open that aortic valve, and it's going to pump that oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. And that's really it. Now, a couple of other things. Because the left side of the heart works the hardest, and the two valves that are on the left side of the heart are the mitral and aortic valve, those are the most common valves that have problems and therefore have to be replaced. So, um, t and typically, too, when you talk about uh, people having heart attacks, they're referring to damage to the left ventricle. Uh, almost invariably. I'd like to point out uh, one other thing, and I think I told you this, but I think it bears repeating. For people who have really bad hearts, surgeons don't like to take a lot of time. So what they do is they put hinges on the heart pieces. That way, like if they got to repair a mitral valve, all they do is just flop open with the hinge, the part of the left ventricular muscle wall, and then they have direct access. Isn't that special? Mm -hmm. Got to worry about those things rusting out, though. Ain't that, ain't that right? Okay, so that's a very quick tutorial on 
the parts of the heart that I'd like to you to know for your lab practical. I hope it helps.